You have minutes to decide. Run for your life, take only what you can carry. That decision has played out millions of times as Ukraines flee the war zone and as picture after picture has proven, many decided to take their pets. Sometimes small and manageable pets, sometimes large, no matter the burden. What binds people so closely to their dogs that they'd make a decision over food and water and other vital possessions? Brandon McMillan is the author of The Story of Your Dog, and he knows a lot about that question and what bonds your dog to you. His new book is all about the mysteries of each breed and how to unlock them to have a better relationship with your pet. And Brandon has brought a little friend along, I think, named Coda. Yeah, there's Coda. Is that, that's a flat, is it a flat coat retriever? Flat coat retriever, yes. What a cutie. Uh, so you're the perfect person to ask because you, you know everything about uh, pets and, and the connection between pets and owners. I want to ask you a little bit about um, what we're seeing in these pictures. Are you surprised at the number of refugees who have chosen to leave with their pets, even the big dogs that require like care, attention, food, and sometimes being carried? I'm not surprised at all. Wouldn't you take your own dog? I would want to, but if I had little children, I would have to make a, a terrible Sophie's Choice decision. And, and you know what that decision would have to be, right? If you can't care for your kids because you're looking after a 68 pound dog. Well, you just hit the nail on the head. Uh, pets nowadays are not our pets anymore, they're our children. I always say the pets uh, of modern times, uh, originally they started out in the wild and they went to the farm and eventually they went to the backyard and eventually they came into the house and eventually they made it onto the couch and now they're in our beds. Our pets are not pets anymore, they're now our family members. And so it's no surprise when I'm seeing these images in Ukraine of people carrying their pets, whether they're 10 pounds or even 50 pound dogs, you know, on their, on their shoulders. So yeah, I mean, if, 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 the, you know, if I had to do the same thing, all my pets would be strapped on my back. I don't care how many. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel the same way. I think this might be the first war that I've covered, and I've covered uh, more than I care to mention, where I've seen this phenomenon, where I've seen the refugees leaving with their pets. And it might be more of a Western phenomenon, being that Ukraine is European than, say, Asian, where fewer people tend to have dogs as pets. Maybe that's the phenomenon. Do you think that might be at play? Uh, possibly, but, you know, as time goes on, I mean, even... I don't care what whatever culture around the world, we're, we're starting to see the evolution of pets are no longer farm animals. They're starting to become, you know, family, family dogs. They're starting to become more, you know, family members. So, uh, you know, in fact, it's, it's amazing, especially in the last, uh, you know, 100 years, we're starting to realize that pets, uh, specifically dogs, can, they can actually detect things like cancer. They can detect blood sugar drops from diabetics. Uh, they can detect seizures coming on. So, you know, we're not looking at we're not looking at them as pets anymore. We're not looking at them as dogs anymore. We're looking at them as vital family members that can potentially uh, save our lives physically and em emotionally. Yeah, I mean, listen, I've been broadcasting for uh, 34 years, and um, this is the first uh, time I've always had a dog in the studio. So there's a little secret. Atlas is in every studio. If he happens to see Coda, there might be some barking, so I'll just give you fair warning. Let me ask you, because I have you, I, I want to ask about <laughs> something in your book that I, I just thought was... that. There he is. That's Atlas. That's Atlas and me on, on um, my front step, and I'll tell you what I... Don't think I've loved any dog more than this this dog. Um, he's so cute. I want to ask you about the, the breeds of dogs and what we think we can get our dogs to do and why we shouldn't think that should be so easy. Well, you have to remember every every breed out there there's no breed that was a fluke every breed was bred for an original purpose hundreds and thousands of years ago and so what i see time and again is people they're trying to mold and they're trying to shape their their dog against the dog's genetics uh for example uh it's very common to see like terriers for example terriers were single-handedly bred to uh exterminate vermin before we ever had exterminators Exterminators only became a, a real thing in the past hundred years, and so the terriers technically lost their jobs that they had for hundreds of years. So now we've turned these terriers into pets, but every genetic in that dog's body 
Coda's tired here, by the way. Every genetic That's in that okay. dog's Coda body can is have still a saying, can have I an need app. to... <laughs> but every genetic in that, in that terrier's body is still saying, I need to go out, find a rat, and go exterminate it. So we have to be understanding of the dogs we have in our house, not the dog we want to have. Uh, every dog has a story. Every dog was bred for a specific purpose, and that's exactly what my, what my book covers. And I try to really itemize not only the, uh, the breeds, but the, the groups, for example, the, you know, the, the, uh, the herding groups, the terriers, the hounds. And these groups all were bred for a purpose. And it's much easier meeting your dog in the middle, understanding your dog was bred for a purpose and understanding that maybe their shortcomings that you find you know, to be annoying actually is fully wrapped up in their genes. So uh, this is exactly what my book is about. And so it's uh, uh, so far, everyone, I mean, I've, I've gotten, I've gotten uh, <laughs> rave reviews. It's only been out just one day. And I've gotten a lot of people that, that skip to their chapter. And all the reviews that I'm hearing right now, they're like, I had no idea my dog was bred for this, you know, 500 years ago. So Brandon, let me ask you this. Um, the biggest mistake that, that dog owners make in choosing um, a breed, and then of course, which breed is the most common mistake for, for families or seniors or singles? Uh, give us a little bit of advice in these last minutes. Well, the, the biggest mistake I see is people choosing a dog that goes against uh, a human's uh, uh, lifestyle. For example, if you're a very mellow person and you never leave the house, I would highly recommend you don't get a, a herding breed, for example. Herding breeds are high energy. If I had to put their energy level on a scale of 1 to 10, I would say it's an 11. Um, furthermore, if you have an apartment, don't get a high energy dog. Um, people aren't, they're not, they, don't, they don't think about their lifestyle and what the dog's natural genetics are. So. Uh, you need to think about your own lifestyle, what you actually do on a daily basis, and that's the kind of dog, that's the kind of breed you should get. There's a lid for every jar out there, so everyone's lifestyle has a specific breed or a breed type. Um, and this is, this is the most common thing that I, that I see. So, and furthermore, you have to think about, uh, yeah, when it comes to families, um, yeah, there, there, are, there are certain dogs. This doesn't go to any specific breed, but it goes to per, a specific personality. Uh, you might want to be careful if you have kids and there's a lot of small dogs out there that simply just don't like kids. So this is the whole point of the shelter system. You can actually uh, bring your family there and you can talk to the people at the shelter system and the, shelter, uh, the sh people at the shelter say, you know what, this little dog right here, it doesn't really like little toddlers, but it's much better with you know, uh, kids that are maybe 12 and over. So uh, this is the whole point of the, uh, the rescue world. You have to, add, you have to uh, consult with them because they're the ones who know these dogs the best. That is smart advice, and there's more smart advice in this book right here. It's called The Story of Your Dog. Brandon McMillan, thank you so much for being here tonight. Really appreciate it. And thank you, Coda. Thanks for having me. <laughs> thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.